Earlier on today I made a video which was this one, how to knit collection Silver FX Pro, uh, black and white photos. Now the thing for me it was 13 minutes and 27 seconds long and that's pretty long for me and um, the reason I'm making this video actually is if you look at this slide and the way I made this video um, it's really got me something in my head which is about thinking, if you remember that slide as well, thinking about how we make videos. So. This video is going on my main channel, but it's really a thinking piece that should belong on my second channel. So the point of this is I made that video using OBS 15.2 in my slide setup way. I'm going to go back to that in a second because the way I would normally make a video is by using Sony Vegas and you can see that a timeline looks like this for those people who do not know. There are multiple tracks of text, slide, voice, music, markers here which are the orange vertical things and you can slide and zoom straight in for example if I pull this in that is a transition from one slide to another and that lasts one second and three frames long so in other words to lay this thing and I always call video editing almost like a sloppy moving mosaic where you're trying to put things down and record it now the good thing about Sony Vegas is that you can hit this red button here which is arm for record and you do your voice over but it's incredibly difficult to do because you have to match the voice with the slides and stuff like that or you just do it in one messy one take and you end up with a lot of people on YouTube who jump cut everything but they still have to jump cut it by putting it into a video editor like this so long story short I started off uh, today using Picasso again knowing that I wanted to make and have wanted to make the Nick collection video for quite a long time so what I started to do is making some slides and noting my slides and adding text and saving them as a 16 by 9 format and you can see there's the other one there that I showed you earlier so in other words I scanned two pieces of paper of my notes, my handwritten notes, put some labels on I knew that I needed them before. Similarly there's another one here where I've had my laptop show whiteboard and then I've as I've done it almost you know almost like you know the, the training I can't I can't deny I've been a you know teacher for a long time but sort of online now not in a regular you know children's school classroom and that is I put today's date and but I knew that that was a session almost that if I followed these three bullet points then I would get the lesson completed knowing that I wanted to do it live meaning live recording and not a stop start stop start you know which was this this sort of affair and so that was that so my, my big thinking point and the reason I'm making this video is that when I was using OBS studio and for those people who haven't seen it I will just talk it through of I went in and I built up my scenes here as slides so for the first one for an example and if you look um and I did a if you want to look at my uh, Mike Downs channel 2 there is one of these a similar one yesterday but the point of it is I'm putting this one on channel 1 so I started off look if you like let, let's, let's say you started off and I'm just going to transition that through so the right screen here if you want to pay attention to it is what is being recorded or live streamed and at the moment you can clearly see there's nothing so the way I would use OBS in this way and notice these are all sources not scenes a scene is made up so for an example the scene called Nick collection is made up of one two three four five six seven components and rather than turning them all on and composing it almost like a TV news type thing you know with text overlays and multiple you know interview um, users like a studio and on location I've just used one slide at a time so I'd start off and I can and watch this very carefully I can transition which um, okay yeah sorry that, that that's my fault teaching point here cut and fade okay and transition so if I do this again and I'll show you what I mean if I want to go through to the whiteboard so I want to get this whiteboard slide recorded into my live stream so at the moment if I do a fade it fades through okay so if I just go to um, there's one here called a standalone that one if I wanted to cut it you know instantly I just hit cut and can you see the difference it's a cut or a fade and I can dial in how I want to to remove these uh, sorry to not remove it says remove there to uh, time these okay if I did want to remove something and change it then what I would do um, is just go back to the beginning again so I would start off let's say um, with a black screen I would queue up my first slide and I would click fade 
it comes in, I would say, hi, Mike Downs here, you know, welcome to Nick Collection, whatever. And then I would come back in and I'd say, I would know that as I was talking to my microphone and recording, I would do this. And then when I was ready to say, oh, by the way, you know, I have made a, a slide earlier on, which looks like this, and it follows the lesson and the objectives, blah de blah de blah I can't turn this one on. Well, if I did I'd turn it on, i get an infinite regress, because this is my Windows 10 laptop screen that I did the majority of that video on. Then, when I got near to the end, all I was doing was say something like um, fading through to one of my slides. The same way as, you know, let's be honest, a teacher would do in the front of a class. They would just, they would just roll up and do it. Um, you know, knowing that they're doing it on their feet. If they get anything wrong for later, they will say, excuse me, class, can I have your attention for a moment? Um, I said something earlier on which was incorrect. The correct part is, you know, whatever it is. And then I carried on like this look. And then I faded through to some handwritten notes. And then I finished it up with a regular um, cut into, you know, reminding about subscribers. And then I outroed and faded to my outro. So that was it. If you, I hope you can see the difference between doing this on your feet in one take. Let's be honest, if it is good enough for you as a YouTube creator or a message giver, shall we say, to do it in this way, go ahead and do it. If you feel much more comfortable by going back to something like Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere or Final Cut uh, Pro or whatever you want to and spend a long time, all I know is I'm excited because I've um, got a lot of videos to make and, and I'm not going to lie, you know, video editing like this can take the time. It can really take the time. And um, if you did have your message organized and you knew exactly what you were going to say, then using something like um, OBS, which is a free product, which I can't, can't, you know, recommend enough, then you can queue it up, start recording, and then look at your frame. If you wanted to put that into Sony Vegas or something similar afterwards, just to, to cut it up or recorrect something, go ahead. But for me to get through a lot, knowing that I've had a lot of years in the classroom, um, this could be a very, very good method. And, and the other thing, if you look up on the screen, I'm, I'm using this video on a webcam. A lot of people who know me obviously know my face and that I'm real. But one of the reasons I do not put myself on webcam with most of my videos these days is because I don't need to be there. You know, I, I adopt the Khan Academy Salman Khan thing, and that is really easy that I imagine myself with the student on this side of the desk, and we are looking at the blackboard um, or the laptop, you know, together, and we are saying, this is how I'm going to teach you. This is what you need to be looking at. This is what um, it all looks like. And, you know, there's the my slide from yesterday. So I hope... Uh, like me, you're getting something out of this and I will keep banging out those videos for you.